Oh my god, Adrian Beaky, say something! Shoot me! Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 major characters of Family Guy who tragically died. Here's your iPod so you can listen to the streaks while you gasp for air. <laughs> oh, the strokes, right. For this list, we'll be looking at the most notable characters on this adult comedy series who actually bit the bullet. We'll be considering those who miraculously came back to life, so long as they were dead for the time being. However, we'll be excluding characters who died on other shows, like Loretta's death on The Cleveland Show. Obviously, this list contains spoilers, so consider this your warning. Which of these characters do you miss the most? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Jess Schlotz Family Guy has a tendency to off-single episode characters after their storylines are through. But this flame of Brian's actually gets a two-episode arc. Hey, life's too short, right? <sighs> Tell me about it. I've been diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Oh, you know cancer? Oh my god, I thought I smelled cancer. Practically allergic to commitment, Brian marries Jess only because she has terminal cancer. However, when it's revealed she has been cured, Jess celebrates her new lease on life by gorging on food. Her new attitude makes her insufferable, leading to Brian letting her choke on nachos. Oh my god, somebody call 911! Damn it, Fox, that's not an invitation to ruin our moment to expand your media empire. <sighs> Son of Zorn. Ha! <laughs> this death is a fake out, however, and her survival causes their marriage to deteriorate further, culminating in her trying to put him down. They ultimately make up, but the epilogue reveals that she inexplicably passed away for real. Well, Brian, I'm sorry that Jess died during the commercial break, but it was a very nice funeral service. Honestly, based on their toxic relationship, we're kind of glad. Number 19. Patty Tanager. You likely don't know this character by name, but you probably remember his catchphrase. Patty Tanager, the caddy manager. Yeah, it rhymes. Big whoop. Wanna fight about it? A fleeting presence in the early seasons, Patty Tanager could always be counted on to respond to any situation with Big Whoop. Wanna fight about it? Whether it's rhyming words, bad movies, or general verbiage, the pugnacious Patty was always looking to throw punches, even though no one really felt the same. Uh, Ex-husband back in the picture, you're working during the day, they got time to bump uglies. That's right, I said bump uglies. Big whoop, want to fight about it? While Patty was something of a humorous, if fleeting distraction for viewers, he apparently wasn't very popular in the writer's room. So much so that in Season 5, when Brian and Stewie take a tank to Superstore USA, they make sure to double-tap Patty along the way, ending his tenure on the show for good. So you got a tank. Big whoop. Want to fight about it? Number 18. Mrs. Wilson Hi there. My name is Glenn Griffin. Uh, I'm here to pick up my son Peter for a ball get uh, doctor's appointment. Peter is your son? That is affirmative. Uh, because you look a lot more like that child over there. Daddy? Oh, God! While Mrs. Wilson only has a speaking role in one episode, she's notable for being voiced by the late, great Debbie Reynolds, whose daughter Carrie Fisher was a regular on the show. While we'll be getting into Fisher's character later, Mrs. Wilson first appears in the Season 7 episode where Peter has to retake the third grade in order to get a promotion at work. Mrs. Wilson was his teacher then, and he's not much kinder to her now. Peter, is this your homework? Oh, hold on, let me take out my reading glasses. <laughs> yeah, that's mine. While Mrs. Wilson isn't shown dying, she does reappear in season 20 when Peter hallucinates virtually every character the show has killed off. This is likely due to Reynolds' passing in real life, and it's nice the show remembered to include her character. Number 17. Vern and Johnny while Patty was hated within the Family Guy production staff, Vern and Johnny were killed off apparently because they were hated by everyone else. I can't see a damn thing! You know what else you can't see? The writing on the wall. Vaudeville's dead, and TV's the box they're gonna bury it in. Back then, everybody had a specialty. I, for one, am a tumbler. Watch me leap through this big hoop. Vamp! Vamp! A pair of vaudevillian performers, these two would cut into any situation. First, Vern would try some kind of gag fall on his face, sometimes literally, and have Johnny pick up the slack on the piano. But apparently viewers weren't as fond of them as Seth MacFarlane, so MacFarlane and Stewie shot them dead. Okay, they're dead, alright? 
we're not going to be seeing them again. While Stewie assures they won't be back, that wasn't actually the case, as they appeared from beyond the grave a couple of times. Where did Robinson Crusoe go with Friday on Saturday night? Ha! Apparently Johnny went to hell, but we don't really want to get into the why of that. Number 16. New Brian Now, this isn't the new dog the Griffins temporarily replace Brian with when the latter is dead for a couple of episodes, but the one Peter replaces Brian with a few seasons earlier when he thinks his pal is getting too old. Think fast! Wow, deodorant! Are you sure I'm old enough? Oh, I think so. I'm gonna make you a little less gross every day. Without a unique name of his own, New Brian is chipper to a fault, meaning it's his fault he's too chipper. I don't like fancy learning books. I don't like apple tarts. I don't like cozy breakfast nooks. I don't like modern arts. Well, I like farts. Ah! Yes, I like farts. While his popularity prompts old Brian to leave, Stewie isn't nearly as enamored. He tries to get New Brian to scram prompting the dog to counter, revealing he did some ghastly things to Stewie's bear Rupert's. Yeah, and now every time you're sleeping with him, he's gonna be thinking of me. This was a bridge too far, as Stewie is then seen hauling his body out to the curb. There's only one Brian, and that's Brian. We'll talk about it when you want to talk about it. I don't blame you. I, d I don't blame you. Number 15, Derek Wilcox. There's quite a few characters who are taken out for good in the murder mystery episode. While introductory characters like Stephanie and Priscilla were no great losses, Derek probably deserved better. Boy, it's kind of awkward seeing Jillian here with Derek. wonder if she's thinking about me. I don't know, are you a pony or the color blue? <laughs> Derek, look! Ha, huh, how do you like that? While admittedly a little boring, Derek at least provided a suitable foil to Brian's ex, Jillian, whom he married a couple of seasons earlier. But he should have known better, being a tertiary character with a killer in the house. Killer in the house. In an attempt to contact outside help, Derek takes his phone onto the outside terrace in search of a signal. Trouble is, the killer, later revealed to be Diane Simmons, follows him and clocks him with a golden globe. Oh my god. It's you, the man or woman who's been killing everybody. Stay back. Stay back. Jillian is devastated, and Diane even has the gall to comfort her in the moment. Number 14, Pearl Burton. Calling Pearl a major character is a bit of a stretch, given that she only appears in one episode. But she nevertheless makes an impact, at least on Brian. Duh! What the hell is this? De-lousing powder. Everyone on the outside is filthy. Well, you could have given me some warning. Here's your warning. It's gonna burn like hell in 30 seconds. A cantankerous elderly woman Brian is forced to spend time with for community service, Brian warms up to her after learning her past as a singer. That's Habanera from Carmen. Oh, I've never heard it sung so beautifully. The pair form a friendship, and Brian convinces the agoraphobic Pearl to leave her house. Tragically, Pearl is almost immediately hit by a truck. Brian, I've missed so much. I wouldn't be standing here right now if it wasn't for you. <gasps> While in the hospital, Brian uses a virtual headset to show her the two of them living out a possible life together. It's a very sweet relationship that ends too soon. Goodbye, Pearl. Hey, who wants to see a dead body? Number 13, Jonathan Weed. Mr. Jonathan Weed was Peter Griffin's boss during the early seasons on the show when he worked at a toy factory. After Peter becomes worried he won't advance in his career there, he invites Mr. Weed over for dinner. Mr. Weed, I uh, was wondering if maybe you'd like to come over to my house for dinner Friday night. Huh, that wasn't so hard. Well, what time? Uh, I don't know, 7.38. His mustachioed superior is actually won over by the evening's meal and even promotes Peter. However, the shock causes Brian to choke on his food. After the food is ejected from Brian's mouth, it lands in Mr. Weed's mouth, causing him to choke to death. <coughs> He's dead. This is admittedly more of a comedic death than a tragic one, though. And Mr. Weed's death did open up the opportunity for Peter to try a variety of other jobs. Oh, sorry, we're out of towels. Uh, let, let me get that for you, sir. <sighs> 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 
Number 12, Thelma Griffin. Here we have another instance of the character being put to rest after their voice actor sadly did the same. Mom, what are you saying? Peter, as far as the U.S. government is concerned, you're an illegal Mexican immigrant. Holy crap! The incomparable Phyllis Diller voiced Peter's mother Thelma for three episodes in the mid to late 2000s. Thelma, by all accounts, was a hard-smoking, high-roller kind of gal, and clearly passed down many traits to Peter. A couple of years after Diller's passing in 2012, Family Guy addressed her absence by revealing Thelma had died of a stroke. You don't die from that, Lois. You just host New Year's Eve and talk funny. Peter, it's true. I'm so sorry. Oh my God, I don't believe it. She's gone? While we didn't get to see enough of Diller as Thelma, we'll always remember the episode where the latter shacks up with Tom Tucker, prompting a very strange stepfather-stepson type of situation. I want, I want that one. All right, hold on, we'll get you that one. I want straws. We'll get you a straw. You want a kid's meal? No. Do you mean yes? Yes. Okay, one kid's meal. And what'll you have, honey? I'll have a fish sandwich and a sanka. Number 11, Doug. The most recent entry on this list, Doug served as the preschool rival to Stewie from season 17 to season 21. Hey, Poopy Thumb. It was golden spicy brown mustard from my sandwich. How many times do I have to say it? <laughs> okay, no need to relitigate what four of our peers saw. Voiced by Chris Parnell of Rick and Morty fame, Doug was smug, privileged, and most of all, insufferable. He constantly looked to rub Stewie's nose in whatever he was doing, be it his connections or his bachelorhood. I like to put rocks in cups, Stewie. You can't really do that with some gnat buzzing in your ear. Do you shake the cup? Not sure what else you do with rocks in a cup. Things come to a head in The Candidate, where the two rivals run for class snack captain. The episode otherwise plays out like usual, with Doug and Stewie tarnishing each other's reputation. Stewie Griffin was a whoops baby. What the devil are you talking about? Stewie Griffin was a mistake! The epilogue later reveals Stewie won the election due to stronger constituents. Oh, and one other reason. Oh, and Doug died in a commuter plane crash this morning. Number 10, James Woods. Yes, James Woods is an actor in real life, but he also voiced a version of himself on the show for many years, albeit an exaggerated, horrendous version of himself. Ooh, a piece of candy. 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 Man, I hope that's James Woods, because if it's me under there again, I'm going to be really pissed off. We probably don't need to fill you in on the specifics, as Woods' appearances making life insufferable for the Griffin family made for some of the most memorable episodes. But his sins come back to bite him in the murder mystery episode. I'm a lot of things. A member of Mensa, a huge hit with the ladies, someone who you know would have broken out bigger if he weren't so impossible to work with. Right, but a murderer. I only just found God. Why would I jeopardize my entrance into heaven? The primary target, Woods is ultimately stabbed by his old flame, Diane. However, this being a cartoon, he was inexplicably brought back to life a season later. My body was immediately taken to a Hollywood hospital, where I was hooked up to a 17-year-old ingenue. And in accordance with Hollywood law, her life force was infused into me, bringing me back from the dead. Due to Wood's real-life controversies, the show has ostensibly cut ties, making it doubtful his animated self will appear again. Number 9. Bertram Stewie may hate his mother most, but he's got another mortal enemy in the family, his half-brother Bertram. Well, 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 if it isn't my half-brother Stewie. Bertram, I haven't seen you since our microscopic encounter. How the deuce did you get out of Peter's testicles? He donated sperm. Gross. As brilliant as Stewie and possibly more vindictive, Bertram clashes with Stewie several times. Their final encounter sees Bertram attempt to erase Stewie from existence by killing his ancestor, Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci, I presume? Who are you, a little lisping baby? You're assassin, you overrated caricaturist! The pair's final battle in Renaissance Italy is an entertaining one, with an aerial battle using da Vinci's flying machines. However, Stewie ultimately finishes Bertram off with an arrow to the head and a terrible pun. Hey Bertram, what's your favorite kind of bottled water? Huh? Mine's Arrowhead. The real tragedy, though, is that we never get to see these two match wits again. Number 8. Francis Griffin 
Francis Griffin is Peter's chronically cranky Irish father. Highly critical of his son and his family, Francis comes to Meg's birthday party in his final episode. Peter, have you been drinking? Well, a little. It is a party. Take off that stupid costume. You look like a damn fool. Ah, uh, Dad, you won't say that when you see my grand unicycle finale. In a horrifying accident, Peter falls off the stairs while riding a unicycle and crushes his father, leading to his death. All right, this is going to blow you guys away. Ah! Grandpa! Oh, my God! Is he breathing? Somebody call an ambulance! Uh, Lois, maybe you better call two ambulances. While we learn later in the episode that Francis was actually Peter's stepfather, it doesn't cancel out how traumatic the event is. Peter, come closer. There's something I need to say to you. I'm here, Dad. What is it? Peter, you're a fat, stinking drunk. Francis may not have been the nicest man around, but he did raise Peter, and if he were anyone else, that might have messed him up. There's got to be something I can do. Maybe I'll bury him in the pet cemetery. <laughs> okay, I'll bury him in a regular cemetery. Number 7. Muriel Goldman Diane's body count just keeps stacking up, and we haven't gotten to her yet. I remember when Muriel and I had our first kiss, and it was just awful. Oh, just awful. We were both very sick, weren't we, dear? Ugh, oh, we were terribly sick. We were both 14, and it was winter, and we had terrible head colds. The wife of local pharmacist Mort Goldman, Muriel isn't much more pleasant, making her a prime candidate for the chopping block. No, it's not true. I would never kill anybody, never. And I am not saying another word until I talk to my lawyer, because why is he wearing shorts? Oh, my God, I told you. In the murder mystery episode, suspicion falls on her, leading her to flee and run off on her own. Unfortunately, she ends up seeing too much, prompting Diane to silence her for good. Her death comes off as no great loss to anyone, least of all Mord himself. But he's only been known to really value one thing, and it sure wasn't her. It should be mentioned, though, that more than many deceased characters, she's since been referenced quite a lot. Say hi to Maud Flanders. No, you say hi to Muriel Goldman. Who? Ah! Number 6. Horace. The original bartender of Peter and his friend's local watering hole, the Drunken Clam, Horace didn't have the biggest personality in town, but he did serve beer. A lot. The guy wasn't very memorable, okay? But his death was. All right, guys, one more out and the game is ours. Come on, Horace, strike him out! When the Drunken Clam regulars play a game against Goldman's Pharmacy, the opposing team brings in Jerome, a ringer. Jerome hits Horace's pitch so hard that it kills the bartender. Oh, my God, he's really hurt bad. You're out of the baseline, by the way. You're out. Game's over. But, oh, my God, Horace is really hurt. The guys don't have much of substance to say at Horace's funeral, though not for a lack of feelings on Quagmire's part. But they're very upset that the clam is almost closed. Thankfully for them, Jerome makes amends by buying the bar. Listen, it's kind of all my fault this happened in the first place. I'm responsible for Horace's death. Plus, as a former athlete, it's my responsibility to invest my earnings in a restaurant, bar, or car dealership. Number 5. Diane Simmons Yep, and now we finally get to the mastermind behind the entire aforementioned killing spree. Cohog's Channel 5 news anchor, Diane Simmons. I really, I should, I should go. No, I don't think so. Oh my god. Oh my god, it was you! You're the killer! Very clever, Lois. Her attempts to get revenge on James Woods for dumping her for a younger woman spiraled into further killings to cover her initial murder. And just when she looks poised to do the same to Lois, Diane is shot from afar by Stewie. If anyone is going to kill Lois, it's him. If anybody's gonna take that bitch down, it's gonna be me. Diane's fall from grace is a sad one, and she was an entertaining part of the show's extended cast. Number 4. Rupert Rupert is Stewie's beloved teddy bear and arguably his best friend apart from Brian, even if he can't talk back. Unfortunately, Brian is jealous of the time Stewie spends with Rupert and drunkenly tears the bear apart. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, what's going on? You killed my best friend is what's going on. Oh, 
Uh oh. Stewie is understandably heartbroken, leading the two of them to make a trek up a mountain in Vermont to lay Rupert's ashes to rest. Stewie and I are both incredibly grateful for all the time we had with you, and we wouldn't change a single moment. Except the end. Sorry about that. Um, rest in peace, Rupert. The duo's eulogy for the departed stuffed animal is surprisingly moving. And while Brian does buy Stewie a new bear on the way home, the original is looking down on them from the afterlife, along with Paul Walker. Number 3. Brian Griffin Speaking of the Griffin family dog, Brian has also died during the show. Several times, in fact. However, our pick goes to the one most of us thought would stick. After Stewie destroys his time machine, he and Brian play hockey in the street. Tragically, Brian is struck by a car. Brian, look out! He has time for one last farewell to the Griffin family before he passes away. You've given me a wonderful life. I love you all. Although Brian stays dead for a few episodes, Stewie finds a way to avert his death and save him soon afterwards. Brian, look out! What the hell? You're alive, my friend! Although this is arguably the most emotional on-screen death, his goodbyes still make us choke up. The fact that it isn't permanent keeps it from being as impactful as it could have been. Hey, who are you talking to out here? A pretty awesome guy. Number 2. Angela Another of Peter's bosses, Angela was his supervisor at the Pawtucket Brewery. Although generally dissatisfied with his performance, she did have a soft spot for him. A little too much of one, actually. Yeah, this is gonna work out just fine. <laughs> Excuse me. Angela met an untimely end due to her voice actress, the late Carrie Fisher, passing away in real life. Allegedly dying due to going swimming too soon after eating, Angela's eulogy is delivered by Peter. So no one told you life was going to be this way. Angela, sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. Angela. Although he begins the speech quoting various sitcom theme songs, he concludes it with a profoundly moving tribute that refers to Fisher herself. It's just a shame Peter delivered it at the wrong funeral. I may have lost a boss, but heaven has gained a princess. And I am at the wrong funeral. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Mayor Adam West a staple on the show for many years, Adam West played a wackier version of himself on Family Guy. My God, I'm a tomato! Like our last entry, when the actor passed away, so too did the character. To honor his memory, the characters pay tribute to him in various ways, from a video montage being made by Peter to getting the high school renamed in his honor. It's too bad nobody went to his funeral, though. None of you people came to my funeral! Still, the guy doesn't seem to hold a grudge, since his ghost seems to save Brian and Quagmire from falling off a cliff. Mayor West? Rest in peace, you strange, kooky man. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.